Tonight, the world will come together in Rio de Janeiro. The opening ceremony for the 2016 Olympic Games. Tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Central. On the networks of NBC Universal, the most decorated Olympian of all time, Michael Phelps, will be the flag bearer for the U.S. Olympic team tonight. So, Rick, we, we've talked about the repave and the, or the harder tire that Goodyear's had to bring the more durable tire. Well, this paste paints the picture. So this is basically a lap graph that most of the teams use. You see time over here on the left. So the idea is to be low. You want to be down here 68 seconds. It's lap count from 1 out to 21 as you go left to right. Well, look right here. Jeff, that's an 11-lap run for the 18 car. What amazes me is how flat it is. His first lap is barely over 70 and a half seconds. His last four or five laps right on 70 and a half seconds, actually getting faster as they burn fuel up. This tells me that race trim might be important, but I like the 78 Martin Truex, the two of Brad Kozlowski, the guys focusing on qualifying because it doesn't seem like pitting and putting on new tires is going to help your lap times. It's going to be staying on the racetrack. So these crew chiefs are going to have to be even more aggressive with their fuel strategy. You have to get track position because new tires is not going to overcome track position. Take a look at Tony Stewart. We mentioned earlier the winningest road course racer ever is Jeff Gordon. And second on that list is Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon on the road courses are unmatched. 17 wins between the two of them. As I mentioned earlier, the rest of the field, 13 wins. Nine of those wins are Jeff Gordon. Five of them at Sonoma. Four right here at Watkins Glen. Tony Stewart, eight wins. He breaks it up, three wins at Sonoma. Five at this racetrack, the most here at Watkins Glen. And then you look at the rest of the field. Kyle Busch. Two wins at Sonoma, two wins at Watkins Glen. And Tony Stewart in his final season. Got the win at Sonoma earlier this year. Put him in position so that he could go for a championship in his final year. Steve did a great job of explaining tire wear and how it affects the pace of the run. And there's drivers that that benefits and there's drivers that that doesn't benefit. Some drivers, and I think Tony Stewart is one of those, that performs better when the track is slick, when the tires are slick, when the tires wear out. I think that he is a better driver when it's more finesse. And you have to, you have to, you have to accelerate in a certain way. And you, 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 if you don't, you're going to eat the rear tires off the car. Uh, we've seen him do really well at tracks that, you know, are slick, that have very low grip. And so, when we get the scenario where we have these tires that last a long time, I think it's not in Tony Stewart's best interest. I think it, it actually hurts somebody like Tony that is better on slick or more difficult conditions. Well, Tony Stewart's teammate, Kurt Busch, celebrating his 38th birthday today, and actually yesterday, and actually has a little bit of a tie-in with the Olympics, which we were talking about will take place at the opening ceremonies this afternoon. Parker? Yeah, Kurt is actually showing his support for the USA with some awesome gloves and shoes right now. How'd this idea come about for you? Well, just with NBC and everybody supporting our red, white, and blue, the Stars and Stripes, wanted to commemorate it with shoes, gloves, and to show my support for all the men and women who are there, you know, in Rio, going through the, you know, the, the four years of preparation and the competition and just the overall energy. It's really neat to see. You only see it once every four years. And so thanks to Alpine Stormers and everybody at Haas and Monster for supporting the initiative and just NBC covering it. You know, we're, we're all tied in together with being out there performing and supporting Red, White, Blue. Let's talk about preparation of your race car here. You're 19 on the board right now. 19, sorry. But are you happy with it? Has, has anything caught you off guard right now? Are you guys going to be getting the Q trim as you go forward here? Are you, have you been feeling like you guys are making the right changes in the right direction? Yeah, we're switching over to qualifying trim now. We wanted to try one more thing in race trim. Uh, these tires are lasting forever, so we stayed on the same set of tires from this morning session. So those tires had 35 laps on them. Uh, the race is 90. Who knows how long these tires will go. So uh, just trying to make sure we find the right uh, gear ratios and shock settings and pace for uh, what we're going to see in Sunday's race. But overall, real pleased with the 41 Chevy. It's Kurt Busch, very happy with his number 40, 41 Chevy and looking forward to the Olympics. Marty? Let's chat with Denny Hamlin and find out how good his race car is. It, it seems like these tires are almost getting better the longer you run, Denny, are they? Yeah, definitely seem like they pick up speed for sure. Uh, we're pretty happy with our FedEx Freight Camry so far uh, through the weekend. 
Uh, definitely feel like uh, we got a car to contend. Uh, what does good foot and, and qualifying trim this practice as uh, it was in race trim the other practice? So uh, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll go to work on it. We're going to switch back over now just to get laps. You know, more repetitions, I feel like the better off I'll be. As you process knowing that the tires are kind of better the longer you run, how does that make you think you're going to have to manage the race on Sunday? Well, I think that... Uh, even though it, you know that lends itself to really driving hard, I think you know keeping yourself under the tires is important here, and uh, knowing that you can make a mistake one lap and you can get it back the next because the tire is really not falling off at all. Uh, so, got to be smooth and consistent, and got to do it uh, for a lot of laps right here. Right, they put sandbags in here, by the way, to show how much Denny weighs to equal his weight. There's like uh, eight bags in there. You said you could lose one or two of those bags? I'd like to lose about two two of those bags for sure. <laughs> All right, Steve, you do that right. You'll put sandbags in to kind of simulate the driver's weight in essence, right? So you don't have to have the driver climb in so you can weigh the race car. Well, you do, Marty, but mostly at the road courses. At the ovals, you have settings. You don't need the driver's weight. But at the road courses, because you set the cars up to turn both directions, a lot of the suspension settings are done with the driver in. And you know those drivers, Rick, they don't want to climb in and out, in and out when you're on scale. So some poor mechanic here has to lift 150 pounds of sandbags into the seat every time they scale the car. I like to defend the drivers, but I can't on this one. <laughs> if you remember, mistakes for Denny Hamlet had the uh, hood pop up after he got into the back of the car in front of him. So they had to replace that hood for Denny Hamlet. That was a year ago. There are countless not very smart things.